Hello and welcome to another episode of the e-commerce coffee break podcast. Today we want to talk about why you should rethink your online growth, why less is more and how you can regain control through strategy. So we'll be a bit all over the place, but it will definitely be helping your business going forward. Joining me on the show is Nicolas Alexandra. He's the founder of BlueEdgeUSA.com. That's B-L-U-EdgeUSA.com. He's a former IBM employee with a double education in computer science and business administration. He has worked his entire life in the retail and e retail industry. His experience ranges across all aspects of retail, from manufacturing, quality control, shipping, warehousing, go to marketing strategies and inventory inventory management. Nicholas has started back at a time in 1996, that's a long time ago, and has never stopped then. Building better e-commerce solutions is a passion for him. And since 2012, Nicholas has been the owner of Blue Edge USA, a company that started in Europe before moving to the United States in 2017. Blue Edge USA is also a Shopify partner specializing in e-commerce solutions. So we have a lot to cover. Let's go ahead and dive in and let's welcome Nicolas to the show. Hi, how are you today? I'm great. Thank you. Thank you for having me on the show. We're diving a little bit into what you can do better in your business and um, what you need to look for. So many online stores chase growth for growth sakes. That's one I feeling that I have. It's all about growth, growth, growth. Can you explain to me what you understand by having a, a precise business objective driving store growth? Yeah. Uh, everyone wants to sell more. You know, you ask any merchant, would you like to sell more? Obviously, they won't. But that's answering that doesn't answer any question what's, what needs to happen behind the curtains. So I guess a better question is, who can we sell better? And by better, it means... Answering, answering more of your uh, business objectives and also helping your customers better. At the end of the day, you are going to sell more, but that's the right way to look at it. Identifying what you need to do and having a plan for it instead of a broad idea of, oh, we want to sell more. You know, it's how much, what, it's, it's too vague. Mm -hmm. Now, the interwebs, e-commerce is for, specifically for marketers like me. It's very easy to fall in the trap of the shiny object syndrome. There's so many tools coming up all the time. AI is coming up. That's fancy. You have a million of different themes and apps and marketing channels. And with all these countless tools and apps, um, it, it's sometimes very difficult to, to find a combination that really works for your business. Uh, what would be your approach to sort of clean up the mess? So first, you, you can't you can't blame the, the merchant for that because obviously, you know, they want to sell more, they want to be more successful, have different, um, maybe a better merchandising on their store. <clears throat> so it's always starting about the strategy, asking your business honestly the right questions. Um, I can give you a few examples. Um, like, you want to sell more, okay, more of what? Because you probably don't have the same profit margin on every product. So that is the first question. Do you want to sell more of this product that is in the 500 bucks? You sell less of them, but it's a much bigger profit every time and you have acquired a customer that is probably a good quality type of customer versus selling more items, number of items, but maybe with a lower profit margin. Or maybe you want that because you need to get rid of that from your warehouse. You know, you overstocked a little bit this year. It's all the question you want to ask. And no, uh, no app is a bullet, a, a silver bullet for that. No app is uh, is going to answer these questions for you. Um, that's really something you need to do with us, with your business. So uh, if you have installed many, many apps before, the ones you don't use, the one you have never really got any benefit from, get rid of it. Nothing against you know developers. We are developers. I'm a developer myself. So it's there is nothing personal here. It's just the more stuff you put in your store, the more time it takes to load, the more different user interface and user experience you are going to put in the same store. It's it's not good for the customer. It's not good for your branding. Uh, it's confusing and it's slow. Slow is not good for SEO. But it, search engine, Google and friends, uh, they hate that. And your customers, they hate to wait to just want what they want, they want to purchase it, click and receive it. So that's that's the way we look at it. Remove all the shiny objects, all the 
magic bullet, silver bullet you've installed previously and, and go for the, the real questions. And it's not that difficult most of the time. We, we, we guide the discussion so we help them get to the right path for that. Mm -hmm. In our pre-shot before we started the recording call, you said you have a different approach than probably other agencies when it comes to working with clients. Um, talk me through it. What what's the differences are there, or what are the differences there? <clears throat> I shouldn't say that publicly, but we like to sit with them without invoicing them and have a conversation. Like, what is it that you're doing? Where are you coming from? There's a lot of what's happening in the front end of the store for the public comes from where they are coming from. What are the struggling points? Many times you will find some things on the website facing the public that is a little bit concerning or, or unexpected. And you're like, why is it there? You know, why are you asking me to do this? I just want to buy the stuff. And it's because they have certain constraints in production, warehousing, shipping, or the way they have to bundle the products or their suppliers. And this problem naturally gets carried over to the front of the store. So that's why you want to understand where they're coming from. Could be something in their supply chain, could be something in their experience. Um, you know, we, we have a client, they, they are very successfully selling kitchens online. Um, the owner used to be a carpenter. So he was not born an online uh, retailer. So it's very interesting to understand where he comes from. And, and then you understand why all the aspects about the quality of what he's doing, because he knows what he's talking about. And then you can help them translate that. So people who want a nice kitchen, but they're obviously not carpenters, they will understand what is the true value of the product they are going to purchase but it needs a little bit of a translation between the core business aspects and the marketing aspect, I guess. So that's why we like to see it, talk, and evaluate the project, have a, a very clear understanding on both ends of how much effort it's going to take, how much time, so how much money at the end. You know? and, and, and then everyone is on the same field, and then you can have a a trustful and relaxed conversation about what really are the objectives and the expectations and, and you can move forward from there and then you can go in, in any type of lens, whether it's technical, marketing, what have you. Um, but I feel that's the right way to start. Mm -hmm. I think it's a very interesting approach to first understand where they're coming from. And I think that's a lot of um, an approach that a lot of agencies don't do. They just put their service on top of whatever is in there and just take it from there. Now, for merchants that are just starting or are going to um, redo their website, what are some strategies or the fundamental principles that you work by to, to get them from A to B to end up with a better store? So we, <clears throat> as funny as it may sound, most companies, they underestimate their inventory in the sense that always your inventory is structured. And that's everything. You remove an inventory from any e-commerce store, it's empty. There's nothing. You just have white pages. And that's where they should start. What am I trying to sell? Am I trying to sell the entire inventory? Maybe if it's a new uh, vendor online, a new merchant? Yes or no? Where is my bread and butter? Maybe you don't want to fight on something where you make, you know, 5% profit margin where you could have 25 um, identifying where you are going to fight for. You can't. You have to pick your battles. You cannot win every possible battle. You are one and be successful. You, you would get overwhelmed. So you need to focus to be strategic about it and maybe, you know, decide that this collection will go live only in three months when you gain more experience. Experience is very important. Uh, you can't just go online and be successful. It's an iteration process. Whether it's the design, uh, the way your brand will reflect online, um, the customer experience, all of that, the different technology you want to use. Maybe some stuff don't work for you or it's not practical for your team to work with. So don't hesitate to 
stop not too small but not too big either and go step by step it's an iteration process don't worry if it's not perfect day one and and just take it from there and i would say be careful with all the the metrics you know people are like oh i'd love to have 10 person conversion I don't know, maybe maybe you should start one person, you know, and if you get 1.2, amazing. How do we get to 1.5? You know, be gentle with yourself and your own business. Be gentle with your expectations. Structure your uh, your go to the world, you know, through the, the e-commerce store. You want to do that step by step. Mm -hmm. No, makes perfect sense. Obviously, everyone wants to have 10% conver conversion rate, but I think very few have that. I think the average conversion rate is <laughs> one, one to 2% or something like that. Yeah. And if you add another percent, you double your business, basically. Now, that would be amazing, right? If you could do that, just double the business overnight. Yeah, it doesn't happen often, huh? So the I want to go a little bit into tools and apps and the magic bullet that a lot of um, providers or software providers promise there what's what's your take on there um, how many apps how many tools do you really need to to run a business so you i guess when we talk shopify apps um we keep standing to our clients you have two type of apps the apps that are backend only maybe they do some you know excel file reporting kind of thing that's fine you know you go in your backend you need to get some some numbers use that if it does what you want perfect um then you have another type, which is the front end. So what is going to face your customers buying on your website? Um, you want to keep it to the lowest number possible. To me, five is the maximum. And I'm already like, mm, four maybe. <laughs> um, just because the more stuff you put on the, on the store, the heavier it is, the more time it takes. And remember that these apps uh, they're not necessarily bad. Some of them are very good and you need to work with them. You need to identify them and make sure you make the most out of it. But many other apps, they are a little bit like the, the magic bullet. And because of all the different metrics, can you prove that this 5% growth is really from the app? Or maybe it's your last Facebook campaign. Or maybe, you know, some, some newspaper mentioned you. So it's, it's really difficult to, to be sure what is coming from. Obviously, you have tools and you have to wait to track some of it. But, you know, if you, if you hear about a new website from your wife and you visit the website, maybe your wife learned about this website on, on Instagram. But I have no way to know that because you came to my website. First. So it's, it's somewhat limited. There are some very good tools and things out there. But when you look at small improvements, it's really difficult to prove it's one app or, or another. Mm -hmm. So what we say is get rid of everything you can get rid of. If you are not sure it's working, at least turn it off. Turn it on again. Try. See a difference. And you have to be very careful when you try to understand what's working, what's not. Because if you compare Tuesday to Sunday, it's probably not relevant. So you need to go from Tuesday to another Tuesday, at least, and, and probably a longer period of time. So it's more meaningful from a statistical point of view. So housekeeping, clean the, clean the slate first. And then we go back to all these questions we had with this conversation, I would say we had with the merchant. What are you trying to achieve? And I was like, okay, you want to sell this more expensive product where you have a big margin. That's why you're interested. Okay, we are going to try to upsell that versus cross-selling random stuff with an app that we just pick things from a collection or whatever. And we are trying to achieve just that. And we'll develop some tools that basically, it, it's all Shopify, but it's something you control from your Shopify theme editor, your regular Shopify backend, but just we build it for you inside it. And you can say, okay, I'm in control. I know I want to sell these five products that are quite expensive, but now we have this little um, banner or this little section on the collection, on the draw card, in the checkout. If you're a plus merchant, we can insert stuff there. Um, 
and you try it and you have control and and then you can move you can merchandise it you can say oh the one that the gold one it's working pretty well let's put it at the top or, or we have a little bit too much of the red model let's move it up in in the in the list so people see it more you are in control and nobody's gonna do that better than you so this is where we start this is like low hanging fruits easy to put into place you know what you want we know what to do to make you achieve that and give you the right control and then you can go deeper um when probably you you are a little bit of a, a bigger enterprise already and, and you have a, a little bit of budget for for improving your store we use the shopify custom app so the shopify custom app system simple it's like a public app but it's private they call it custom but it used to be called private before mm -hmm. So only you, it's developed just for you. It lives on your server that is connected through Shopify, through, you know, security protocols and, and, and so on. Um, it's fully integrated. When you look at it in the backend, it looks just like Shopify. You, If I don't tell you, you can't tell the difference. It's just the same loop, same everything. It works the same way, so you don't have to struggle. You don't need any learning curve, anything. You just go pick your stuff, do whatever you need to do. And it's obviously all things we we have walked together on, you know, mm -hmm. in the the design of it or your team is going to use it. So when it's there, it's just, uh, it feels like it's, it was always there, right? And then the sky is the limit because basically you have Shopify, you have your own server, you can manipulate the data. Um, for instance, for some clients, we, we run reports every night. Every night, 4 a.m., we look at all the variants some of them, they don't have a weight. And you know what? It's a big problem because it means when you ship this good to your customers, they weigh zero. So you're going to lose on the real price of the shipping, the real cost of the shipping, because you, maybe you invoice five bucks for it, but USPS will, at the end, weigh it and be like, uh-uh, 940. Every time you lose money. So we send that to their warehouse department and, and the, the, the department managing the inventory. So they know exactly, it's, it's just an email they receive every night. The morning you turn on your computer, you have that. You just click on the link. It brings you directly in the Shopify um, bulk editing section for this product with these variants. You just have to enter the weight, save, and you're not losing money anymore on this product every time you sell them. Mm -hmm. a very, that's a great um, example of how you can optimize in the back end. And I understand you have a, a very holistic approach on optimizing. So it's design, it's UX, it's merchandising, optimizing, it's apps. So it's it's really around about everything to, to make it better. You mentioned before the um, example with the carpenter. What kind of industries do you work with? Are there specific industries that you work more with than others? So we have a lot of interior design. Uh, and it's because it's complicated to sell interior design. For instance, if you want to order doors uh, for your kitchen, there is a good chance some of the doors in your kitchen have a different size. So you need to be able to tell the system, my door is 12 inches by eight, and the hinges are a little weird because we had to do this and that um, initially, and you know, you're not going to push the walls in your kitchen most of the time. <clears throat> So you get to be able to order something very specific. Also, when, when you do this type of website, you really need to understand and walk with the merchant. You really need to understand the user experience. Some kitchens, when you take all the drawers, all the doors, the knobs, I mean, you name it, it's a cart with 70 items. So if it's not clear, people will just drop the cart and it'll be just like, did I order this one? Is this one the right size? It would be overwhelming very, very easily. And they drop the cart. And uh, I mean, you do the math, 70 items, even if each item is not a lot of money, it's it's a nice cart. You don't want to lose that. So you want to offer automation uh, whenever you can to make things easier for people. You want to present that. The design is how it works, really. And here... It's always going to happen for your for your customers. If you mess up the design, it's going to be difficult. Uh, it's going to be frustrating for them. 
And that, that's not what you want. So we have a lot of people in this industry, fashion as well, obviously. It's uh, you always have fashion. Um, and I guess when I say fashion is the same, it's it's not necessarily selling complex product because you know if you buy a t-shirt and a jean, it's not like technically complex, but it gets complex when you want to merchandise it right on your website and you want to drive the sales by the merchandising. It's like shop window in the street. You know, if you keep the Christmas goods all year long, uh, people will, people will get tired of it. I would say so. You need to merchandise it. That's one of the most overlooked opportunity online, in my opinion, today. Obviously, some merchants do a great job at it, but many merchants, they're like, it's okay, it's you know, it's there. I've put it online. I have my collection, my list of products, and then I have the you know the new drop is right below, and that's fine. It's great, but it's not enough. Make it interesting, make me come back. And I would say to some extent make google happy you know if, if search engine see changes something is happening so probably there is something interesting there for people so they mm -hmm. will drive more traffic to you yeah good good point good point as you mentioned before you talk to your clients before they become clients walk me through the typical onboarding process for a new client what steps are involved how long usually does it take to get up and running so usually we have a first 30 minute discovery call with the owner or C-level. Um, it's almost like, are we a good match? You know, for them and for us. Some, some, And sometimes we just have to talk about the reality of things like, oh, we would like something like this website in three weeks. <sighs> I wish <laughs> that would be very good for us. Uh, that's not going to happen. So some project um, need a bit more time. Uh, so we, we need to to start to get rid of that things and, and make sure they don't start with expectations that are not realistic. So we don't want to disappoint them. I prefer to scare them a little bit and they have a good surprise um, rather than saying something. It's it's really in our DNA. We know no BS. We really say what it is, um, even if it's not exactly what you wanted to, to hear at first, but at least we start on a, on a good basis, solid basis together, and we can grow together. I guess that's why most of our clients are, are with us since five, six years and ongoing. So that's that's the first step, understanding where we stand, are we a good match? Um, most of the time we are a good match, but you, know, you, you want to be sure about that. And then there is a second call. Uh, usually more people from their team will come and, and everyone will start to expose, oh, you know, uh, the shipping, we have this problem. Uh, we have this uh, marketing department might say we have this new product coming in one year. It's very important for us that it goes live as soon as it, as it gets there in the warehouse. Um, it can be some, uh, some, some consultant as well that we join, like the branding or um, I wish more time uh, advertising and marketing agencies that are third parties, uh, vendors. Mm -hmm because we all work for the clients at the end of the day. Um, so that's that's usually a second meeting. And then, then we have a very, it's not easy, but it's a simple process. Once we start to understand where they're coming from, and where they are going, we do the wireframing. So for, for those who are not familiar with wireframing, it's... Uh, very simplistic design of the key pages on page product page you know the cart and then some collections or some pages explaining the concept if it's a little bit difficult to sell online it's a wireframe really simplistic it's somewhat a sketch of what it could be so you decide that here you you will have a video because your product maybe is a little complex to explain or you have some great marketing tools and you want to put that in front of people as soon as they land on the website and then maybe it's very important for you because you're in fashion uh, to sell the very last drop of products. So you would want to have some sort of slider or collection, whatever it could be. And we define each page conceptually what they are trying to achieve on the website. And it's the beginning of the merchandising, but because it's also the beginning of how oh, it's going to work and take place in the estate available on the page, it's also step one of the design. And once everyone agrees on the 
on the wireframe, for us, it's very important because we start to understand what needs to be developed, technically mm -hmm. speaking, to achieve that. Then we move to the design, high definition, mobile and desktop. It's the, a mobile and a desktop. It's not just like you you put things on top of things, so you, you will you know, <laughs> shove them in a smaller <laughs> space. Um, sometimes it's fine. You can you can stack two things, um, but you you have to be careful about not having a very long pages and things like that. And understand that on mobile the experience might be a little different. So maybe you would present things a little bit differently. Same goal, same end game, but you need to adjust to the to the tools you have. And, and in that case, it's mobile. And in many for some of our clients, it's ninety eight percent of the sales. For some of them, it's only sixty percent, depending on what you sell. But you need to be mindful of that. Okay, let, let me stop there. I, w yeah. I want to dive a little bit deeper into how long does the process take? So between a first contact, what's what's the average? <clears throat> the first two calls, it's, you know, one or two weeks, depending on their availability, but it, it could be in the same week uh, if they have enough, uh, enough time to allow for that. The way of framing, we usually do a few key pages, present that to them, get the feedback, and then do a second iteration and do some more pages because now we know exactly what they like, what they don't like. So it's probably another month. For some websites, it's three, four months because they have 100 pages because mm -hmm. it's very, very complicated. But, you know, many times one, two, two months is, is enough. The design phase could take a little bit longer because everyone has something to say. Um, the branding department, the marketing department, you know, the customer service department, very important to have their input. So that might take between a month and two months, most of the time, sometimes three months, because, you know, you need that and you need to have more input from different people, from different departments. But many times it's, it's their timeline. We follow their timeline. Maybe it's not the only big project they are dealing with at the moment, so we can meet only once a week or, or every mm -hmm. two weeks, you know. And then the development phase, usually the development, we have a pretty good idea because it's the last phase. So after the design, you execute, you develop the thing, back and front end. And the way we present that is for every page, every section has a number of hours of work hours assigned. So you know exactly how many hours we're going to spend for each section of each page for the entire website or the entire project, I should say. And this document is shared with your entire team. Okay. So you know okay. exactly if we've done 1%, 5%, 10%, and you know many days, so you know that the new website will be developed in one month, two months, three months, or more if it's a huge project. Mm -hmm. So it's so really other, transparent. It, okay, so in other words, if you want to get your website ready for cyber. Monday, Black Friday, you shouldn't come in September. That that you should literally start <laughs> now today. <laughs> yeah, September is, you know, in uh, that reminds me of the, the the brick and mortar retail. I've been working in that industry for a very long time with you know big, big players. And obviously when they put, place an order, it's like you're talking millions of units that needs to reach somewhere else's at a certain date. And we had this joke every year that surprisingly this year, Christmas is in December. <laughs> because every year someone will knock your door end of September and be, you know what, we'd like to do promotion on this for, for Christmas. I'm like, nah, Christmas next year or <laughs> like this one. Uh, so the earlier, the better. You don't want to rush it. And, you know, every project is unique, but we used to tell our clients in the brick and mortar uh, store at the time, um come in august or christmas that's a good time mm -hmm. okay i think you gave our listeners a very good overview and a very good feeling um if they have never been through the process of a complete relaunch of a, of an online store how much work is involved and how complicated it can be and how long it will take before we come to the end of our coffee break today is there anything that you want to share with our listeners that we haven't covered yet uh yeah i think we've talked big numbers uh, so it can be overwhelming. It can be a little frightening. Sometimes you don't need to redo everything. Sometimes you just need to adjust some things because you've done a lot of great things before and some 
stuff are not working the way you want or you have something new, you know, like a new collection or something. Sometimes it's just a couple of weeks of walks. Um, and that's perfectly fine. I think it's about fine tuning every aspect of your online business. And you don't have to win the war tomorrow morning. You can win a little battle today. Maybe invest only one week of work or two weeks and move forward and keep moving forward. And and that's that's the way you grow. And the magic about that is even if you put only 10% more effort on your online store or merchandising or whatever, because you're doing a great job and you're doing it right, time after time, people will tell other people. And at the end of the year, you have way more success than the input you've put. So keep improving it. It doesn't matter if you have a $20 billion company, you need to keep improving it. Or if you are just getting started, as long as you want to do it right, you will get the right outcome in the end. Mm -hmm. I think that's a perfect end to the episode to really summarize what we were talking about is, is focus on the key elements, keep your store clean and don't overboard with apps and shiny object syndrome and you will grow over time. Where can people find out more about you guys? I guess you can just go on our website, blueedgeusa.com. Um, reach out to us, send us a little email. Um, there is a, a very simple form that will open as a draw account, just like in e-commerce um, store. And, and, you know, let's start the conversation and, and let's see what we can do together. Okay. Nicolas, I will put the links in the show notes. Then you're just one click away. And whoever is listening and wants to learn more on how they can optimize their business, their store, their online store, it just should simply reach out to you. Thanks so much for your time today. Thank you very much. Hey, Klaus here. Thank you for tuning in to another episode. Before we wrap things up, I've got a couple of important points to share. Firstly, if you have enjoyed today's episode and want to support the show, here's a simple way to do it. Help me out with that algorithm magic by liking, commenting, and subscribing on your favorite podcast app. And if you're feeling extra generous, leaving a rating would be great. Your support helps me bringing more impactful guests on the show, and it makes it easier for others to discover the podcast. Secondly, I want to talk about to all your business owners out there. Here's a question. Are you tired of juggling everything in your business while struggling with your marketing tasks? Fed up with hit and miss experiences of hiring freelancers or agencies that don't quite get your vision? But perhaps you're not ready to commit to a full-time in-house marketer just yet. Well, I've got a solution for you. Introducing our fractional marketing team. My team and I provide top-notch experienced marketing professionals to become an extension of your business. Not only will they save you up to 50% on cost compared to traditional hires, but they also take care of all this time-consuming, repetitive and complex marketing tasks that have been holding you back. And this way, you can concentrate on what truly matters, the core of your business. To learn more about how we can help you to scale up your online sales with a fractional team member, head over to our website, smart-ecommerce-marketing.com, or reach out to me directly and I'll get you the details. You will find the links in the show notes. Thanks for being a part of our podcast community and remember your support means the world to me. Until next time, see you then.